Hello students, welcome to lecture of kinematics and theory of machine. Myself Silas Patel and we are going to start today some friction bearings. Okay, let's start. So first of all, we are going to understand what is a bearing. It is a rotary. The bearing is a supportive element for the all the rotary element like shaft which is rotating in our machine. Rotating shafts are frequently subjected to axial thrust and also radial load. So that's why we need to use these types of bearing which can support the rotary element uh, when the element is uh, rotating at a very high velocity and under loading. Okay, so that's why we use this types of friction bearings. Okay, so uh, uh, there are you can see on a screen there is a first is a uh, flat pivot bearing. So, because there is a flat surface is there, that's why it is known as a flat pivot bearing. It is also known as a footstep bearing. Second is a conical pivot because the shape of the end the shaft is a pivot, uh, conical. Okay. Third is a truncated. And third is a truncated pivot bearing. Okay. And the, after that, you can see the uh, there is a shape of cone is there that's why it is known as a truncated pivot bearing and after that there is a you can see the step is given there to, that is known as a single flat collar bearing because there is a collar is there but if you use the multiple collar it is known as a multiple flat collar bearing well this is a simple type but due to this bearing there is a sum of friction uh, is there and that's why some torque of that shaft is lost. So this uh, frictional torque uh, resistance of this friction is there and that's why we need to find the how much torque is required to overcome that friction. Okay. So in all this type of bearing there is a some friction due to this friction resistance torque minimum torque we have to require to start the rotary motion and we will find that torque and for that first of all what we need we need to find the how much friction is there okay and for friction first of all we also need the area let's start the first bearing okay so during finding this types of torque uh, frictional torque in this bearing there is a two criteria is there first is a uniform uh, pressure theory and second is a uniform wear theory because two surfaces are there which is uh, uh, continuously in a rotary motion and there is a wear is there. So first of all we can assume the uniform pressure theory when the two surfaces are transmitting uniform pressure. Okay. Second theory is uniform wear. Why? Due to this rotary motion wear is not uniform completely. And that's why the pressure applied by the one surface to other is a may change due to the area. Okay. And why there is a wear uh, is not uniform in these two surfaces because rotary motion is there. And as you go uh, toward the outward surface, the velocity of rotary motion is higher. As the surface we uh, uh, considering that near the center they are rotating at a low velocity although the uh, rpm of this uh, body is uniform but the the molecule is moving near the center is very less but at in the same time the outer molecule or outer surface is moving fast and that's why wear of outer surface is more and due to that the pressure is not uniform and that's why we, we, we have to assume uniform wear theory. So that's why two theories are there. We will find the uh, frictional torque by these two theories. First of all, we take the uniform pressure theory. Okay, let's start. So first of all, we take the flat pivot bearing. You can see the flat surface is there at the bottom of the shaft which is in a come in a contact but first understand the terminology w is a load transmitted over the bearing surface 
is the you can see the vertical shaft is there and total load apply on that is a W. R is the radius of that shaft. P is the intensity of pressure per unit area of the bearing surface. Means it is a pressure. Pressure is equal to force upon area. Okay. And mu is the coefficient of friction. So how we need to find how we will find this uh, uh, frictional torque. Okay. First of all, we select the small element of that surface which is coming in contact. Okay. From the bottom uh, area, we take the small ring. Okay. Whose uh, radius is a r and thickness of that ring is a dr. We will find we will find the uh, frictional torque for that particular ring, and then we will integrate for full uh, area. Means from zero to capital R total radius. Okay, let's start. So first of all, uh, we will consider here the uniform pressure theory, and uh, we have a selected small element. Whose radius is R and thickness is a dr. Okay, so pressure on that particular element is equal to pre. What will be the pressure? Pressure is equal to force upon area. Force means load which is working on that shaft W upon area pi R square. Capital R square means total uh, radius. So we will find the intensity of pressure which will be the uniform throughout the surface. Okay. Now, what will be the area of that element we have selected? So you can see two pi r periphery into that thickness of that element dr. So area of that small element is equal to two pi small r into thickness of that element dr. Now, load transmitted to the ring. What will be the load? You can find the load. The small load taken by that element is equal to pressure into area of that element. Okay, so load taken by that ring is equal to pressure on that link into area of that link. So we will uh, put that value P into two pi r dr, and we will put the value of. Now, what is the friction? As you know that the friction is equal to mu into n or uh, r. This r means normal reaction. Okay, friction is equal to normal reaction. In this case. The load working is a, a cause of that reaction. So mu into load carried by that small element. Okay, so dW, and we will put this dW as we have find it the pressure into area of that ring. Okay, so mu into P into two pi r dr. So the friction torque is equal to what is the torque? We are going to find the frictional torque. And frictional torque is equal to force into radius. As you know that any torque is equal to force into radius. But right now we are talking about the frictional torque means the torque required to give on the shaft to move that shaft. So it can overcome that friction which is uh, during uh, between the surface of the shaft and that bearing. Okay. So frictional. Torque is equal to force, frictional force into radius of that small element. Right now we are talking about that element, and then we will take for the whole of shaft for zero to capital R. So we will put this value force into radius, force, frictional force. We have find it that so final term is two pi mu p into R square dr. This is the frictional torque on that small ring. Now we we are going to consider for the full shaft. So total frictional torque is equal to capital T zero to capital R. Capital R is nothing but the radius of that shaft means up to center to full radius. We will integrate this term, and as you know that two pi mu p r. Up to this point, P is a constant. R square into dr r square. Integration of r square is equal to, you know that, uh, r cube by three. Limit is zero to r. We will put that value and we will find what we have found it here. Two by three pi mu p r cube. This is the uh, final torque or frictional torque for that flat pivot. B
but if you put the value of p means intensity intensity of pressure is equal to w by pi r square we will put this value here and you can see that uh, r square and r cube is eliminated so our equation will be 2 by 3 mu w r okay frictional torque for the flat pivot bearing 2 by 3 mu w r okay for uniform pressure theory this this we have derived based on uniform pressure theory same we will derive for the uniform wear theory okay let's start so whenever you consider the uniform wear theory we can't use the pressure is equal to w upon 2 pi r squared directly because as i have told you the as the uh, the time goes for the old bearing what will happen the uh, surface which is near to a center will be which uh, will have less wear and outer surface which have higher wear so pressure will not uniform throughout the surface and that's why we will take here the pressure into radius is equal to constant c okay as you can see on a screen the velocity of rubbing surfaces will be higher as you go for, uh, further from the center to outer surface. So, the pressure will decrease outer, at a outer surface at a velocity higher and near the center pressure will be high but velocity is low. So, pressure into that radius is equal to we take uh, constant here. Okay, pressure into radius is equal to constant. So, we can take pressure is equal to C by R. C is the constant. First of all, we need to find the C also. So, let us start how we will solve this uh, theory. First of all, we have to take the smaller ring. Uh, load taken by that ring is equal to similar to that. DW is equal to pressure into area 2 by R DR. Okay, but pressure is equal to right now we can write here what c by small r c is a constant and r is a radius of that small ring okay so load taken by uh, that uh, small ring we can integrate total load we how we will find the total load check this total load is equal to integration of 0 to dr load taken by that small ring okay and you can see here 2 pi c c is a constant and integration of r as you know that integration of r is equal to r square by 2 okay 2 pi and c all are constant so we, they will be uh, common out and only one is there and integration of one is equal to r okay so it will put the value of limit 2 pi c r is equal to w so you can find here the c is equal to w upon 2 pi r r is a radius of that shaft okay now you can put this c is equal to w 2 pi r in our formula okay so as per uniform wear the theory frictional resistance same here uh, frictional torque acting on that ring is equal to same will be uh, friction is equal to mu into w dw and put that value torque is equal to friction into radius similar is there only change is there the p pressure is uh, moved and the c constant is there and we will put that value here okay check this the pressure is eliminated by c by r and we will integrate here the torque by the small ring is equal to 2 pi mu c small r dr and we will integrate that and integration of r is equal to r square by 2 so our formula will be here like 2 pi mu sorry pi mu c r square but the value of c as we have find it here the value of c we will put here so 2 pi mu w upon 2 pi capital r into r square so r r will be eliminated and our formula final formula you can see on the screen the torque uh, frictional torque between this uh, flat pivot bearing is equal to 1 by 2 mu w r okay r is the radius of that 
sharp. So what is the change between these two formula? In uniform BR you can see 2 by 3 mu w r and in this case 1 by 2 mu w r. Okay. Thank you.